Hello? No, I'm not a ghost buster. No, I'm not a ghost hunter either. I don't hunt or bust ghosts, although people think we do. I'm not even sure if ghosts exist. I investigate claims of paranormal activity, so therefore, I'm a paranormal investigator. Now, I'm sure many of you have seen the shows and may have an interest in the paranormal. You may even want to try paranormal investigating on your own. So here are some basics for how to conduct your own paranormal investigation. My three basic rules, you could even call them mottos of paranormal investigation. One, be prepared. Two, always be objective. And three, expect the unexpected. Now when I say be prepared, I mean be prepared in every sense of the phrase. You must be prepared not only for the physical investigation, but be prepared mentally as well. Remember, things can and will go bump in the night. First, you must choose a location. Always remember to get permission to be there, and for safety's sake, don't investigate condemned buildings. Um, always investigate in, indoors. It's a more controlled environment, so no graveyards, please. Pre-investigation research is a must. You should know the history of the building and the claims of the paranormal activity, and all other factors that could influence your investigation. This varies by location. For a truly scientific investigation, you must capture evidence, and the equipment is how you do that. So, you will need a video device. These should be night vision or zero lux cameras. You're going to want an audio recording device. Don't use voice recorders. Always get full spectrum audio recorders. If you want to get fancy, you could even get an EMF or electromagnetic field meter and a thermometer of some kind. And finally, a flashlight that has a red light. This doesn't hurt your night vision. The last, but sometimes most important piece of the equipment you need is a friend. And preferably not a wimp who's afraid of their own shadow, okay? Anyone, including a die-hard paranormal investigator, can get scared when they're alone in the dark in a strange room. Always investigate at night. And this is not just to scare you new people. You do this because most people are asleep, so there's actually a lot, a lot less noise to deal with. Um, also, turn off all the lights and all electronic ge uh, gear. This minimizes any EMF interference. Be objective. I can't tell you how important this is. You're going to hear strange noises, and when you're tired, your eyes can play tons of tricks on you. So try and always remain objective. Don't jump to conclusions, and always use your brain and think through situations. Debunk. There's usually a reasonable explanation. If the temperature in the room falls, you feel a breeze on your legs, you hear what sounds like someone breathing behind you. Remember, it could just be a draft from a window, not necessarily a ghost. If you don't have evidence, it didn't happen. Personal experiences is just that, they're personal. They make for great stories, but ultimately no one will believe you, and everyone will think you're crazy, I promise. <laughs> Expect the unexpected. Whether it is really paranormal or not, strange things can happen that you don't expect. A book being knocked off a table can really scare the crap out of you in a dark room. Don't overreact, or you may find yourself on YouTube. <laughs> on two separate investigations at Big Nose Cakes in Tombstone, Arizona, I decided to provoke a supposed spirit. I insulted him and the lady that he was interested in. The first investigation, I was told, F you, and get out by some raspy voice. On the second investigation, I was also told get out while being shoved against a wall. I was knocked down and finally knocked off a stool. I have no idea what happened that night, but believe me, expect the unexpected. Strange things can happen. Once your investigation is over, you now have a ton of evidence to review. Arguably the most rewarding and mind-numbing part of this whole process is where you watch and listen to every second of all the evidence that you just captured. Although finding true evidence of paranormal activity is really rare, the type that you may find more often is an EVP, or electronic voice phenomena. This is a voice that you hear on the audio that wasn't there during the recording. So now you know the very basics of paranormal investigation. Be prepared, always be objective, and expect the unexpected. I encourage you to all go try your hand at this. Go stay in some haunted hotel room. See what you can find. But most important, remember, have fun. 
For more information from me about ghost hunting or paranormal investigation, you can follow me on Twitter. You can check out my website or find me at Gangplank. Thank you. Have a good night.